Good morning, and uh, welcome to the sixth webinar in the Calyx webinar series. Uh, as you can see, um, I have changed my location. Uh, unfortunately, I had a bit of a, uh, a problem with the ceiling um, in my uh, home office, so it, uh, yeah, it ended up uh, collapsing. So I've got uh, contractors in there repairing it at the moment, but um, hopefully this is not too bad. The echo's uh, not, not too horrendous. Um, today, we're gonna have a, a bit of a chat about uh, wineries uh, and how the wastewater is managed there, the challenges around uh, treatment of the wastewater, whether that's breakdown of organics, uh, odour control, uh, all, all those type of uh, challenges. Uh, the experience that that uh, impacts on the, uh, on the cellar door and around the, the surrounding wineries, whether it's function centres, things like that. Um, but also, also the, the just general challenges around making sure that the, uh, the wastewater is able to be reused, um, whether that's going onto uh, paddocks or it could be uh, used for irrigation of the, uh, of the actual winery and how Calyx products can, can really assist in improving uh, the sustainability of the, of the wastewater around wineries uh, and uh, also improve uh, the bottom line for wineries through uh, a better experience um, with your customers. Uh, so I might jump into, first of all, an interview with, uh, we've got a couple of people. There's uh, uh, Ralph Lloyd Smith, who is a, uh, a, a technical expert on uh, winery wastewater and other types of wastewater treatment. And Sam Sood is our key account manager um, for the, the Southern, Southern Australia area. So uh, we've got, I've had to do a uh, pre-recording of that, uh, that interview. Um, mainly due to the, the ceiling collapse in my office. Uh, so that, that part's not live, but uh, this, this discussion is live. So uh, please make sure you're logged on to, uh, on, onto YouTube. Um, there's a uh, chat box uh, that side, I think. Um, if you've got any questions as we're going through, please uh, put, put some information into the, into the chat box, ask some questions. Uh, and I'll, I'll get back to you towards the end of the presentation and we'll, we'll discuss ways that, uh, that we might be able to help you out. Um, for people that are potentially joined us from the municipal wastewater area, um, there's probably going to be a fair bit of overlap with some of the previous presentations. Uh, just so you're aware, um, yeah, there, is, there is a bit of that, but uh, people who are in the winery field, uh, I hope this is going to be um, very interesting for you. So without further ado, I'll, I'll jump into the, uh, the interview with, uh, with Sam Sood, uh, sorry, Ralph first, and then, uh, and then Sam after that. So we'll talk to you soon. Hi, and welcome to the webinar about wineries within the Calyx webinar series. Today, we've got a great discussion with Ralph Lloyd Smith, who is a, a applications, customer applications engineer with Calyx, uh, working to help people out with uh, putting ActiMag within their different wastewater processes. Uh, and Sam Sood, who is a uh, key account manager uh, for Victoria, South Australia, and Southern New South Wales. So Ralph, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it's Fantastic to have a chat with you today. A pleasure, Michael. No, looking forward to it. Excellent. So I, I understand you've been working with a, a few wineries around Australia. Uh, could you give us a brief rundown about uh, what kind of work you've been doing there? Look, uh, we've mainly been doing, uh, looking at a number of wineries. And uh, I must say that the one thing I've learned from looking at wineries is that no two have got the same wastewater system and no two have got the same two issues. So it's, uh, well, maybe not quite no two have got the same issues, but they've all, all manifest in different ways. Uh, we've been principally using our ActiMag product for pH control. Um, we've done that on another site where we've replaced a, a generic, generic um, commodity type product and okay. one where we've replaced ammonia. Um, and uh, yeah, we're having quite some success. Right. Okay. Uh, so, is this uh, this is within the wastewater system within the winery? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, it's, uh, it's the is it the wa the wash water and things like that that come out of the wine making process? Well, whatever comes down the drain, and I must say, uh, at one point, uh, I saw some uh, wastewater that I could swear was 
straight red wine, but I'm sure it was had some water in it somewhere. But, <laughs> Sounds like yes. a bit of a waste, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It, it certainly smelled like red wine and looked like red wine. Uh, I wasn't going to taste it, though. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd imagine that kind of waste would be, uh, would be fairly acidic, would it? Yes, yes. Um, all I've seen there is, uh, is acidic waste, but it will vary from winery to winery. Uh, this winery in particular I'm thinking of practices uh, where they uh, remove all their caustic uh, clean in place streams and keep them in an evaporation dam separately. I know other wineries actually do shandy their uh, their waste caustic into the stream so it will vary but yes primarily during their their harvest their their vintage mm -hmm. uh, it's very acidic and uh, their usage peaks over those three months for for their alkali usage but um in the off season obviously it tapers off when there's a lot less crushing and a lot less um spillage of, uh, of grape juice and ferment products i guess into the system right you, you mentioned caustic there so uh that that's caustic from a clean in place system is it where yes um from my experience most well most almost all food manufacturers uh, and beverage manufacturers are using caustic for clean in place. Um, I've noticed a couple of wineries are actually using potassium caustic to actually reduce the sodium in their waste stream because um, that's always a concern to them when they're irrigating on woodlots or in their own winery, uh, vineyards. But yes, they're generally using an alkali uh, for clean in place. So that, so that way, the, if they're using the potassium hydroxide, does that mean that it reduces the sodium content in the, uh, in the final wastewater to go onto land, does it? Correct. That's, that's the, the driver by using the potassium hydroxide rather than the sodium hydroxide, yes. Right. I have, I have heard of a few uh, food manufacturers who uh, they, they use, they've been forced to use potassium hydroxide within their wastewater process. Um, uh, or, or within their clean in place system um, because because of the high sodium content um, mm -hmm. and they they they've been using um, say caustic soda within their wastewater and a potassium hydroxide uh, within their clean in place system um, which has pushed up the prices is that is that something similar for the winery industry is it Look, I'm uh, a little agnostic on that uh, the one customer that we specifically discussed with that didn't really divulge that, but I understand it's it may be a little more expensive, um, but obviously keen to get some feedback from you people in the marketplace in terms of whether that is an issue to you, um, because we're aware that the price of caustic in a lot of marketplaces has increased as well, um, particularly through this COVID period. But um, yeah. Right. It, so it, so how, how, have, uh, how has Calix been able to help in that respect? Look, um, ostensibly, as I said, when they're trying to get rid of sodium in their wastewater, uh, we've been able to add uh, magnesium hydroxide or, or, or Actimag, which is a highly reactive product um, with our highly reactive high surface area MGO. And um, when they're looking particularly at salinity control, um, they're looking at the parameter called SAR, sodium adsorption ratio. Mm. And um, that's a derivative of, um, uh, of sodium, calcium and magnesium. You're trying to keep that to a minimum, um, but magnesium and calcium ions appear on the bottom of line of that equation. So by putting that uh, magnesium in place, you'll actually reduce the sodium adsorption ratio and make it more amenable to irrigation on your, on your, uh, your land. So, right, so, yes, so, even, so even addition of the, the Actimag or magnesium hydroxide uh, from, from Calix uh, assists in that SAR value, um, Ab even, even without adjusting it'll... the pH. Is that, is that right? Yeah. Right. Yes, it does. It'll offset if you've already got sodium in your wastewater. And, I mean, if you're using sodium in your clean in place, you're going to have it there anyway. Mm. Um, but basically, by using magnesium rather than adding additional um, sodium, by either using soda ash or um, or caustic, uh, will offset it because it, it it puts that magnesium concentration on the bottom line, uh, which, if you like, it's a it's a it's a sum that's got um, 
sodium on the top line and magnesium and calcium on the bottom line. So if you increase your use of either calcium or magnesium, you'll decrease the, the SAR and make it more amenable to irrigation. Right, so for so if I'm understanding this correctly, for, for every for every kilogram of uh, caustic that you can offset with uh, with Actimag, um, mm. you're essentially doubling the bang for your buck in terms of SAR value. Is that right? So absolutely, you're 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 putting magnesium in on the bottom line yeah. and taking sodium away on the top line. So it definitely is a a very um, successful way of actually reducing your SAR. Right, and potentially, and, and, and potentially, if somebody is um, if somebody's limited by the amount of say caustic they need to use in the clean and place system, so they, they've mm -hmm. um, they're being limited by the sodium content in their wastewater, they yep. could they could switch to Actimag in order to uh, increase their ability to put more sodium into the clean and place systems. Is that is that right? Yep, correct, correct. Right, that's really so, interesting. So yeah, that's uh, de definitely it. I mean, if you're adding caustic in the uh, clean in place and that's going down your wastewater and you're adding more caustic um, further down in your wastewater system, you're just adding more pain for yourself and you're better to add an alternative that doesn't add sodium. And certainly magnesium fits that bill very nicely and, and is a, a chemical that works very well for pH correction. Oh, fantastic. Uh, um, part of the issue is that caustic is very over, easy to overshoot, um, being what I like to call a high GI alkali. It's fully available, and uh, as soon as you dose it, it's just like a sugar hit, and uh, you get immediate pH correction, but you can easily overshoot. Um, yeah, we did see that uh, a couple of weeks ago with the webinar with um, uh, with Doug Kelly uh, from IER yeah. in the United States. He was talking about um, that... Uh, the relationship between pH and alkalinity, and uh, how it might, might be worth if, if people um, who are watching this webinar haven't seen that, it, it might be worth going back and, and having a look at that because that that explained mm -hmm. that uh, relationship incredibly well in terms mm -hmm. of um, uh, yeah, just seeing seeing how quickly the pH can change if you don't have the alkalinity in in solution. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's the thing I've learned over the years i've been doing ph chemistry for many many years and uh, learning the importance of alkalinity is, is absolutely fundamental um, you can't just work off uh, sort of a ph and work out how much either acid or base you need to add to correct a ph if you don't uh, factor the alkalinity and you're going to get it wrong right absolutely so, so in in terms of um in terms of these winery applications that you've been working on, um, mm -hmm. how, how does, uh, say, Actimag, a magnesium hydroxide product, how does that compare with um, some other, like other, other alkalis on the market, like uh, uh, lime or m milk of lime, um, so caustic, uh, th those, type of, those type of alkalis? Well... Um, in, in, in terms of how much alkalinity it provides into the system? Okay. Um, if you're taking a weight for weight, 50% um, uh, caustic and a 60% uh, magnesium hydroxide, or more particularly Actimag, you'll yeah. use about 60% of the weight to get the same pH correction when you're using Actimag as you would for, for caustic. So if you've got a 50% caustic, you use one kilo of, of caustic, mm -hmm. you'd use about 600 grams of Actimag. So, so that, that fits uh, very nicely. Um, and the, uh, the big benefit as well is that obviously caustic is, sits at pH 14, uh, fully soluble, fully available, sugar hit when you dose it. But sitting at pH 14 means off health and safety is an issue. If you spill that on your hands, you won't have skin much hmm. uh, left. And... Um, Whereas Actimag sits at a pH of around about 10.3 neat, so it's a bit, it's a bit, you know, uh, paradoxical. You, you're looking at a stronger alkali in Actimag in terms of how much work it'll do. 600 grams equals a kilogram of 50% caustic, but it sits, it sits at 10.3, therefore is safe to handle. Um, you can you can bathe in it, you can consume it. Uh, I mean. 
magnesium hydroxide, also known as milk of magnesia, is the original antacid. Um, the, oh, yeah, the just properties just, that make it great for wastewater treatment. Sit on used... your stomach while you're uh, having, having a, after a big lunch or something. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, even um, you go and reach for my lanta, if you look at the active ingredient, 50% of it is magnesium hydroxide. Oh, um, right. You know, there's no, there's no secret there. It's been used in antacid for over 175 years. Therefore, it is safe to handle and consume. Oh, okay. Um, so you is cannot that... say that for caustic at any rate of dilution. Hmm. Yeah, so, that, that's true. So caustic, even even at a low dilution, shoots up to a pH of 14, doesn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So it's not, you know, it's not something you want to handle. And, uh, you know, I, I remember watching Doug's uh, presentation the other week. Oh, this was another one he did. And uh, he just showed uh, uh, photos of, uh, of a worker who'd been working with dilute caustic and not realising, and didn't realise till the next morning, was still in, his, in the, the lady's skin. I think she was cleaning with it. And it had caused burns overnight. Um, it is a dangerous substance to be handling. It's not something you want to be getting on your skin. Right, right. Uh, active mag, as I said, is harmless. Um, as I said, you can bathe and you can do anything you like with it. Mm. Yet, uh, yet it can provide that much that much of a pH boost to, or a very high alkalinity. Absolutely. The secret is the fact that it is a slurry-based alkali. Um, and when you dose it, you dose it as a 60% slurry in water. Not all of that alkali is immediately expressed. Um it is very sparingly soluble so that the alkali doesn't release until the hydroxide that is soluble initially is consumed. And then it keeps dissolving and releasing alkali until you either totally um, neutralise the acid present or you exhaust the alkali by dissolving all the magnesium hydroxide particles. Right, so, so, it's, a bit, so it's a bit like, um, say... I suppose to think of something that wineries would be familiar with, um, like a slow release fertilizer or something like that. Absolutely. So it is slow release, and when you're dosing it into your wastewater system or your treatment plant, um, if it's not all immediately consumed, it stays uh, suspended in the system and uh, then will dissolve as it's required later on if it's challenged by further acid. Or one thing I've noticed in wastewater treatment in wineries is that you can get continued fermentation. So you can actually get some reversion. You can actually dose the, the wastewater and you'll actually see the pH will start to um, to lower again as you're getting further fermentation. Now, oh, that's... And that's, that's within, the, within the wastewater system itself. Absolutely. So uh, right. if you've got a sugar hit like, um, like caustic, it does all the pH correction and there's nothing left. To yep. do the work, whereas ActiMag, you've still got product left over in terms of undissolved, unconsumed ActiMag, mm -hmm. and that can then um, be a reserve uh, source of alkalinity should you get further acid production. So it, wow. it, it works very well in that sense uh, as a, a an alternative alkali to caustic. It's got a lot of benefits. I mean, the safety, low, low, nil sodium. Yeah. And uh, and um, yeah, and um, just that ability to keep giving. Wow. Okay. Um, so Ralph, um, one of the other ways that we use ActiMag within, uh, say, you know, abattoirs, uh, other wastewater systems that have got a, a very high phosphate level, um, <laughs> is potentially using it as a uh, a way to capture the the phosphorus as a as a struvite. Um, mm -hmm. Is that, is that something that can be done within um, winery wastewater as well? Look, if there is phosphorus uh, as phosphate, ammonia, um, free ammonia available, and you're adding magnesium, and particularly a high surface area magnesium product like ActiMag, hmm. um, you have all the right elements there to remove uh, phosphate as struvite, which is a magnesium ammonium phosphate, or MAP. Um, that is a, a, a slow-release fertiliser. You precipitate it out as a crystal, and then that slowly dissolves as it's when you apply it to land and becomes a slow-release uh, ammonia phosphorus fertiliser. So uh, 
yeah, it's a good way of actually getting rid of phosphorus uh, while, you, while you're uh, doing the neutralisation of your wastewater and, uh, and also uh, assists. Now, part of that also is depends on what sort of pH you're running your wastewater to. Um, and that's something we need to look at specifically on a case by case basis. Right. Um, and that, generally, a lot that, of is that, 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 that that's affected by other parts of the process, like a, a dissolved air flotation system or or some other settling system? Is it like uh... well, uh, generally, where we're talking with uh, customers and they're just looking to meet the pH requirement for uh, for irrigation on a on a a very well. If that's the only stage of their treatment um, and they're just doing pH correction, they can run their process down to five. That's not a particularly good uh, place for the ammonia because the ammonia won't be present as free ammonia. Um, so it's uh, something, sorry, ammonia, ammonium iron. So it's, 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 it's not really the best combination, but certainly if you're doing a full treatment and you're running more towards a pH of neutral, Certainly, that's where the struvite's going to come more into the equation. Okay. So, yeah. It's so, a case so what, so what, what, situ what situations would uh, would a winery be running their pH, say, down at a pH of five as opposed to uh, more neutral? Well, uh, um, wineries that are just pH correcting so, merely to irrigate as a raw effluent Yep. And um, that's a couple of the ones we've seen. And generally, if the only step of their wastewater treatment is solid separation and pH uh, neutralisation, they can generally run down to 5, 5.5 on okay. the effluent they put on their vineyard. So that, that, bring, that brings the pH of the, uh, the wastewater that's coming directly out of the winery up from, or something that's quite acidic, quite yeah, low yeah. pH. In, in up the threes to... or fours, it brings okay. them up into the fives. So, so now, that way they can apply it directly onto land? Is that, and, absolutely. Uh, it's right. an untreated effluent just with the pH neutralisation. But, but if you're going to a yeah. full-blown system, and we've seen ones with full-blown systems that have got anaerobic uh, lagoons um, with uh, gas capture and in aerobic treatment. Mm -hmm. If you're going to run those processes, you need to run them closer to neutral, and you'll certainly run the pH higher, obviously, towards neutral to make right. them work. And that's to look now, after the bacteria within those systems, yeah? Absolutely. Uh, the anaerobic bacteria like to be running at a above 6.5, uh, 6.5 to 7.5, and that's pretty well the same for the aerobic bacteria in a uh, in an aerobic secondary treatment system, such as an activated sludge plant or just an aerated lagoon okay. or anything of that nature where you're trying to grow aerobic microorganisms. So does that, does that mean that, um, like as well as lifting the pH in order to um, just achieve the, the, the pH for the outfall uh, or irrigation and that type of thing, uh, there's potential benefit in terms of uh, boost, boosting the amount of digestion of, um, of uh, say, CODs and, and, and BODs or organics that are in that wastewater? Look, certainly what we've seen elsewhere in, in, in other processes, uh, other piggeries and, and other food processing uh, plants, certainly there is. Uh, not something we particularly look for in, in wineries, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, what we've seen elsewhere would be translated across. The big benefit of obviously pH correction, either prior or in an anaerobic process, is that makes that process more stable. And if it's more stable, it will do a better job. Um, it's clearly alkalinity and pH uh, are two important measures in running an anaerobic system. Hmm. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 it's. Yeah, it's a lot, you, lot to learn, and I must say, as I said, every system I've come across a winery, a cookie-cutter solution, you can't go in there and say, I know the answer before I go there. Uh, that would be absolutely foolish. And uh, I guess my method of working with, with customers is, is asking questions, seeing what they're doing, finding out what they've got to achieve and what their problems have been. And, uh, and working through the individual needs that that customer has. Um, it won't always be Actimag, but in a lot of cases, Actimag is certainly a, a, a contributing factor that can get them where they want to be. 
Right. And um, so in, in terms of analysing, say, winery wastewater systems, uh, what kind of capabilities do you do you specifically have? So how, what kind of approach would you take when you turn up to a well, winery? I guess I'm, a, I'm an older an older type guy. I've been around for a while. I've uh, cut my teeth in the wastewater industry, initially in pulp and paper industry that I worked in the municipal um, wastewater treatment sector with Melbourne Water. And then I've worked uh, for 25 years with a with an industrial gas company working on uh, industrial gas based solutions in the industry. Mm. Uh, and now five years with Calix. And I guess all that's built up to a uh, a strong background of, of, of diagnostic problem solving. And um, yeah, and that's the approach I like to take is to, to try and understand, sit down with the operator, sit down with the environment manager, uh, whoever, and, and, and find out what, how they're going, what they need to achieve and what their aspiration is, if, and particularly if their license conditions are likely to tighten, uh, what sort of issues that will that will do, uh, will cause them. So, okay. yeah, absolutely. You've got to work through what they've got and what they need to do. Right. And um, I, I, I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So... That that initial discussion and the the the, the consultation on the uh, on having a chat about the problems, um, mm. how much does that actually cost the end, end user? No, that's uh, I'm an overhead and uh, in our in our sales team, but basically I'm there to deliver value to the customer and and to Calix. And uh, if there's not a solution that we can offer, I'm happy to walk away. But if there's something to work with, uh, I'll work both with our sales team and with the, the customer to, to to really develop a co-developed solution that meets their requirements. And that and that's what I really get my kicks out of. I'm, I'm a bit unusual, um, is that I really enjoy hands-on work with the customer and right. solving problems. And that's where I really get my rewards from. So there's so there's no no cost and no pay. commitment. <laughs> so so no no cost and no commitment to the no end user. No cost and no commitment. Um, it's it's just really a, an activity in in us building a business for Calix and and working with customers. So yep, it's a no obligation uh, a sort of relationship. But obviously, uh, if we're successful uh, and we might go through a trial, um, we uh, we work with the customer so that. We are their solution provider of choice, um, and in a lot of cases, that's it. We get some very good feedback in the way we work with customers. Oh, fantastic! Uh, we yeah. try to be really professional and and do the right thing by them. There's no point selling them something they don't need. You've really got to sell them something that addresses their needs and solves their problems. That sounds like a really good approach. Yeah. <laughs> well, as I said, it does. It's it's proven, and uh, and, yeah. and I like it. It's it's good, and I, I really like working with customers. You can I find when I go to customer sites, I always learn something. I mean, I can, don't come with all the knowledge. Um, you you came to to learn from every customer you work with and come away with more knowledge. So, um, and then that helps you with with working with further customers. So it's a it it. It's an investment that Calix puts in, but it's an investment that we gain out of in terms of learning. So, so okay, uh, so it build, essentially builds expertise within within the winery industry and also the wastewater fields. Yes, absolutely. I must say I've got many horror stories of things I've learnt by the mistakes we've made. Don't we all? <laughs> Calix, but the main yeah. thing is when you learn is to note what what you did wrong and uh, what you've learnt and apply it next time so you never get caught again. Right. And um, it's, uh, it's um, I know we're talking about wineries here, but I found a lot of tricks working in the dairy industry. And I must say, I uh, if I went to a dairy customer now, I'd be a lot more aware and a lot more armed with the right questions to ask um, oh, to make sure yeah. I fully understand what's going on uh, yeah, it is a very know. it's a very similar process, isn't it? With the uh, yeah, yeah potential anaerobic digestion, the pH quite a quite a, a low pH um, acidic yeah wastewater coming out of the system. So there's, there's the analogs, yeah, isn't there? Particularly when you can get uh, fermentation. I mean, I found yeah. a uh, 
a, a, a dairy which uh, I didn't know was using, um, was making sour cream. And uh, I was doing test work on their raw effluent. Yeah. And then when they built their treatment plant, they put an equalisation tank in. Well, the little acid-forming bacteria from uh, the wastewater stream from the sour cream manufacturer very nicely colonised that, and uh, they had a high pH effluent, but by the time it came out of the equalisation tank, it came out as the low pH effluent. Go right, bigger. And that would be <laughs> and that would be similar that would be similar to the winery industry with the uh, with the yeast that come through the system there. Absolutely, it can all happen. So you've got to be very aware of that. And uh, yes, it's uh, it's you're not dealing with a wastewater that it's a fixed. Um, it certainly has microorganisms already in there mm. that, will, if you're given the right conditions, go away and and, and uh, produce acid. So, right. uh, and that, they yeah. do that by breaking the the like the long organic chains down into yes. um, volatile fatty acids, things like acetic acid and things like that. Is yeah. that right? Yes, yes, yes. All those sort of things. So, yep. Right. Oh, so well. you don't want to, you don't want to be making acetic acid in your in your winery, though. You don't want to be making vinegar, but no, um, no, <laughs> no, but no. In the waste stream, you might be. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's. I suppose even even. I mean, bad bottles of wine just demonstrate how how easy it is to introduce that uh, that acid making process within within say a wastewater stream. So yeah, yeah, yeah it is it is a it's a spontaneous thing pretty well in in uh, in food waste and very other wastes that um, left to itself it will form acids. Yeah, um, aerobic bacteria will will um, colonise and they'll do their thing. So, oh, uh, it's uh, it's been a very interesting chat anyway. So, look, Ralph, I might leave you there. Um, I'm just going to flick over to... Uh, we're going to have a bit of a chat to Sam Sood, um, who's the uh, the key account manager um, for these areas. Um, but, look, Ralph, thank you very much for, for, for having a chat and ex sharing your uh, your experience in the, in the winery industry. A pleasure, Michael. As I said, uh, happy to engage with customers after this. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I'm really uh, happy to field any questions. Uh, no question is silly. Some of the answers might be, but no questions are silly. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, I think people out there will really appreciate you, uh, your expertise, um, uh, bringing, I mean, expertise in this webinar, um, but also being able to apply that uh, at, at their particular site. So, uh, yeah. look, thank, thanks for having a chat, and um, and if anyone uh, has any challenges that sound very familiar uh, with what Ralph's just discussed, uh, then look, get in touch. Uh, jump on our website. We've got a contact page there. Uh, get in touch with us, or you can even uh, add add comments on the uh, the side of this video, the side of this webinar, to ask questions. I'll try and come back with uh, with answers at the end of the webinar, um, but. Uh, if you've got a, a very technical question that Ralph can help with, uh, it sounds as though, uh, Ralph, you can uh, uh, get out there and, and help people with, with their specific situation. So, yep. um, all right. Thank, thank you very much, Ralph. And uh, I'm sure people will uh, look forward to talking to you. Yep. No, great. Thanks, Michael. Okay. So uh, we're joined by uh, Sam Sood, uh, the key account manager. So uh, for Victoria, South Australia, Southern New South Wales, and Sam, I understand you've uh, you've been doing a lot of work in the in the winery field with Ralph. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. We've we've toured around the Riverlands and um, the regional South Australia and Victorian regions to visit um, a lot of wineries and understand what challenges do they have in place and how is it that we can contribute towards you know solving those challenges for them. So yes. Oh, wonderful. I did. I, I must admit, I did. Uh, I watched your webinar uh, two weeks ago um, with regard to the uh, uh, the dosing units, the discussion you had with uh, Shane Redke. Uh, that, yep. that was that was really interesting to see uh, the the solutions that Kellex, Kellex Engineering have come up with uh, mm. in terms of ease of application and and, and that type of thing. So, uh, can th can those type of systems also be used within the within the winery industry? Absolutely, Michael. Um, I mean. The, the engineering team, I was listening to your discussion earlier with Ralph and the um, value Ralph and the other application engineers bring 
to our customers in the field by helping them, by walking with them through the problem and, and, and discovering the solution together. And, and yeah, there is nothing to um, limit that these dosing solutions cannot be applied in winery. They absolutely can be. In fact, I'm working with a few customers who really appreciate our ability to not only support them with the trial and provide our own dosing units to be able to conduct a trial and see how the product performs and then later on you know help their maintenance teams um so usually we we liaise with the maintenance um, manager or the maintenance engineer on site to figure out you know um what will be the best ideal capacity after we've done the trial and determined how much active mag dosage will be required to do the treatment. We work with them to identify the best capacity of the storage tank. Our engineers will work with them to find out what do they need. Do they need an automatic dosing? Do they need it to be manually operat um, operated? Or um, do they need some someone you know, within the Calix team to actually also help them with monitoring the unit and the level of the chemical from a remote location so that they don't strain their resources into checking the levels and um, doing the checkup on the units. So those kind of services and support is um, absolutely available and is used by um, some of our binary customers at the moment. That sounds like a bit of an all-in all in one uh, package solution, doesn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it is. So, it so is. In, term, in terms of the, uh, say, if a... If if I owned a winery and I had a, a wastewater system that I wasn't quite sure about because um, you know it's not core business my 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 business is making wine um, yeah. so say if there was a bit of a concern say with odor or pH or something what what, what process would I take in order to uh, engage with with you as the key account manager um, yeah. in order to address the problem. So usually, Michael, um, look, everybody um, has different range of resources that they can dedicate towards this particular wastewater treatment and finding solutions within wastewater um, area of their of their company, right? Mm. Um, and and uh, while the general perception might be that you know it's an um, add-on expense and not the key focus of the business, but in reality, um, I'm seeing a lot more of our customers are getting. Uh, much more sensitive towards you know, um, their impact on the environment. So um, sometimes you know they've involved EPA into our discussions to ensure that our product can help them achieve those discharge limits. And um, secondly, you know, not put a lot of strain on their resources, as I earlier mentioned. So as long as you know, and and in some in some companies uh, we work with environment um, environmental managers, whereas in the other companies we work with the OHNS managers, or um, in other companies we work with the maintenance managers. So the position descriptions um, might be different, or the people responsible for handling the same job within different companies and customer base might be different. But the idea is that you know we work with this person who is responsible with looking after the wastewater um, treatment side of things. And we um, help them, first of all, you know, we can do bench trials to show them um, how does the product work and, you know, what will be, um, you guys were talking earlier about dosing um, caustic or dosing other chemicals and then finding a comparable value of, you know, if you're dosing, say, um, a kilo of caustic, then what will be the comparable value of Actimag? Because, um, um, these uh, these personnel who are concerned with the wastewater treatment also need to go and show their their managers or their EMTs that um, this is a cost effective solution and it's not only the direct impact and the cost that this product will have but also the impact on the indirect cost which goes into managing solutions like caustic which are yeah. um, which we already touched on the safety aspect of that they are yeah. not safe you know, high pH and can have um, dangerous impact on you if you don't um, handle it the way that it should be handled. So it's it's classified as a as a hazardous good. Whereas Actimag, on the other hand, has a um, pH of 10.3, very safe to use, very much like milk of magnesia. You can yeah. You know, Ralph Ralph mentioned before you could you could drink the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I don't um I don't know if you remember this, um, Michael, but um, long time ago we actually um, were at a conference and you know um, people were asking us about how safe this product is. So um, one of our teammates actually dipped their finger inside the beaker of the Actimag 
Mac and um, swirled it around and showed them that I still have a finger left. But yeah. imagine if he were to do this in a in a jar of caustic, what would have happened? So yeah, yeah. there's there's obvious concerns around you know the cost um, for our customers to be able to prove to their EMT and their management that there will be benefits in the cost, um, both so direct and and indirect, as I mentioned. So, so you mentioned about cost, but are there uh, are there potential upsides, uh, potential positive benefits for using something like ActiMag within within the wastewater a wastewater system? Um, absolutely, there is. Yeah, um, absolutely, there is. So Ralph touched on um, using ActiMag to improve the condition of the soil because magnesium, when it goes out, majority of the majority of our customers within the winery base are actually using the effluent um, in their uh, woodlots to irrigate or um, they irrigate irrigate their farms nearby or their vineyards nearby. So they don't want a lot of sodium content in, in this effluent. And what magnesium from the Actimag helps is it helps with improving the condition of the soil. It's a, it's a natural soil conditioner. So there's definitely that benefit in there. And um, secondly, you know, as I said, there's a, as I said, there's a cost benefit. There's a um, safety aspect to where that you're not risking your um, personnel's health and safety. And, um, you know, um, mm. you, you're reusing your um, effluent and irrigation and you want to make sure that you're not putting something harmful like high sodium or high potassium out there. Yeah. Are there... Um... I know other areas that I've I've worked in in terms of applying Actimag uh, around uh, biogas generation. So uh, I've I've come across uh, abattoirs or, or different uh, wastewater facilities that are able to take uh, the methane that comes off their anaerobic process and and use that to to generate electricity or, or re reheat uh, whether it's different parts of their process. It could be just the the wastewater system or, or reusing that heat that comes off. Um, from the from the methane in terms of um, uh, using that to as as actually a heat source as a part of their process is that something that the winery industry can do as well? Um, absolutely, they can. Um, we are yet to come across, um, and this is um, an honest answer there, Michael. We yet to come across um, um, somebody from the winery um, customer base who are doing um, uh, doing um, such things as in capturing their their biogas from the waste. Um, if any of the customers who are listening to our webinar today, um, if you do this, uh, we would love to have a chat with you because um, certainly we have seen the benefit that we have brought to our other customers in the in the abattoirs and in the poultry um, sector. So why not? Um, I don't see mm. how this cannot be implemented in, in the winery sector too. Okay, that's, that sounds, uh, uh, sounds like a very interesting uh, um, yeah, potential, I suppose, for... Uh, getting yeah. a bit of payback um, from, you know, a waste stream in the wine industry. So it would be interesting to see if there are any uh, wineries out there. Um, look, if, if if there's people watching uh, within the wine industry who who do have that, you know, jump in the comments and and uh, and have a chat with us right now. It'd be great to uh, great to find out. Um, Absolutely. So Sam, I, I worked with you a little while back at a winery up in Rutherglen. Uh, where we applied ActiMag into the wastewater system there. Um, as I understand, it was for, for odour control. Uh, do you want to just give us a brief rundown about how ActiMag was applied in that situation? Yeah, yeah. It's perhaps one of the simplest applications I've come across, Michael. Um, so the situation with this customer was, as is with um, all wineries who have cellar doors, um, you want the customer to get through the door and experience that wonderful smell of the wine, right? Yeah. You don't expect the customers to um, come to the door and um, the first thing they experience is this really offensive smell of the wastewater. So that, that and, that's, that's coming from hydrogen sulfide that's generated from that uh, the wastewater system, is it? Correct. Correct. Okay. And um, what had happened was customer had tried a um, number of solutions, but, you know, um, they came to us for a help. And um, as I said to you earlier, it's very simple application. What we did was um, where the pit where the wastewater was coming in, we dosed um, some of the Actimag in there, um, mixed with the wastewater, and the effluent was just discharged in the evaporation pond across the road. Mm. As simple as that. 
and um, you know, no complicated dosing systems, no complicated, um, no complex handling of their of their chemical. Just a bit of a do- um, Actimag into the dosing pet, and off you go. The problem is resolved. That sounds so, pretty. That does sound pretty simple. In, in terms of how they actually applied it uh, and put it into the into their system, um, Calix provided equipment, did they? Um, not in not, not in this particular case, as I understand. Um, it was hand dosing because of the low quantity, and uh, yeah, very easy to dose in the pit directly. And customer's choice was to not have a dosing system in place. But then we have other customers who um, are using this in their wastewater treatments for both odor and pH correction, and they prefer to have um, dosing systems. I I currently have a dosing system where um, the customer customer is trialing with a very basic. Um, naked Kenny system, what we call, um, with the 2,000 litre <laughs> capacity. Sounds like an interesting <laughs> dosing unit, a naked Kenny. <laughs> yeah. you know, do, you know, do, you explain, do you want to explain what that is, the naked Kenny? Uh, look, from how I understand the brief that I've been given is, you know, they wanted to decide on um, the name of this particular unit. And somebody from the team said, it looks like one of those, you know, transportable um, toilet systems. A oh, portaloo. <laughs> So it's, it's a bit like the Kenny. Oh, okay, so Ke- the uh, the Kenny uh, movie with uh, the guy with the portaloos. Yeah, yeah oh, that sounds so wonderful. Could... So uh, is that that's uh, the one that's been renamed to uh, from your webinar last week? Is it the the Acti Dose Flex? Is that correct? Acti Dose Flex, correct. Okay, yes, that, all right. I was with that that um, it we we used to refer it to as a naked Kenny system, <laughs> but. There. We've got the wonderful names now for all different dosing systems that we have into a catalog. And uh, yes, it's a very basic flex system that we provide to our customers for a trial with a 2000 liter um, storage capacity. And, um, um, you know, we work with the with the customers. So um, the benefit of having people like Shane and Ralph um, in sales support team as application engineers is, you know, um, they go to the customer side, understand, you know, what kind of system they have because no two customers have the same system. Mm. And uh, that was the whole takeaway message um, we got when we were touring around different wineries, um, seeing everybody's system. Every winery has got a system which is a bit different to the other winery. So we can't really apply the same sort of solution to one customer that we would have applied to their neighbor down down the road so uh, so, so, so know, it sounds like that that technical expertise is very important when it comes to comes to the winery industry and wastewater there Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So Ralph has, you know, he already mentioned to you, he's got an extensive um, experience of working within the wastewater systems for the last um, so many years. I think it's 25 to 30 odd years. And, um, you know, the benefit of having Ralph and Shane um, in the field when we go and do customer visits is that they'll, they'll um, first of all, try to understand, you know, what the challenges are um, what, what, and what are the challenges which are unique to that particular customer and help the customer work with the customer to identify, you know, what kind of dosing location will be ideal. And I know for a fact that, you know, this this particular trial that we did with this winery um, in regional Victoria, Ralph spent a good um, three to four days on their site um, to set up the dosing system, to set up the trial and to monitor the dosing system for the the trial for the first couple of days to ensure we don't come across any issues. And and when we leave, the customer is fully satisfied with how the trial is set up and there are no hiccups. And um, then Ralph provided some remote support um, to the customer. Um, getting in touch with their mechanical fitters on site every week. And it's interesting. Every week, you know, wow. <laughs> yeah. Every week, every yeah. week. And um, trust me when I say, you know, in the remote regions when the internet's not that great and these guys, you know, they do a great job. They're out there trying to solve problems and, you know, field issues and battle issues and they don't have sometimes phones on them or emails on them, uh, computers on them. And here, you know, here was Ralph trying to provide support and trying to get in touch with whoever he could to get in touch with the fitter and, you know, take the details over the phone, ask him to send him the photos if there was any concern and, you know, providing that sort of support. Um, and, and, and the customer did tell me that, um, that one of the feedbacks I got from, from the group of customers we visited in that region was that um, this is the first time they've seen a chemical supplier in their region and you know 
um, not many have knocked on their doors and not many have spent so much time to understand, you know, and ask them the question, what are your challenges and how can we support you? So it was a, it was a great feedback to have and it shows our commitment to actually stick with our customers through thick and thin. And, and it sounds, work with sounds, with sounds quite different to say a commodity grade chemical supplier or something that, that just really has a list of chemicals that can be delivered to your site. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. that that additional support sounds. If I, it sounds wonderful. If you were if you were dealing with a wastewater system that you weren't quite sure about, so having having that kind of help um, to be able to help with with pH or odor control uh, sounds like a, a you know a breath of fresh air in uh, in a chemical yes. supply industry. And the fact is, Michael, that um, um, as we said earlier, waste what people, um, customers don't. Um, have a lot of resources dedicated towards the wastewater treatment side of things within the company because it's not mm. the core business. So the fact that as a supplier, we can provide you the support from an applications engineer, we can provide you a support from a key accounts manager or a BDM, and you know also provide you the technical support, provide you um, the support over the phone, uh, remotely and in person on your site and help you, um, you know, find a solution as you are either trying to switch from one chemical to another or trying to um, do some cost reduction on your site. Um, it's it's the sort of um, support which is available. And okay. uh, we, we yeah. are actually really passionate towards working with the winery industry because we're learning a lot as we, as we speak to the customers. So uh, I personally wouldn't leave a chance um, or, or wouldn't leave an opportunity if I were to go and visit a customer and, and see what they're doing and find um, some yeah. solutions together. So you, you did mention, um, say, cost reduction and that, those type of things. Is that so? Say if uh, if 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 I was a um, uh, working in the in, in a winery wastewater area and uh, there was potential cost cost reductions or cost improvements, would that be something that you could help in terms of working with for, to create, um, say, a business case or, or justification that I could put forward to to my the management within the winery? Absolutely, absolutely, Michael. That's that's in um, in a short summary my job. Um, with with the so Ralph and I and Shane and I uh, work as a team when we are supporting these customers. So as I said to you earlier, um, we um, support them with bench trials to first of all be able to demonstrate that the product actually works um, yeah. and and will give them um, the kind of output that they're looking for. And um, secondly, once we have done the field trials, I work with their management to actually gather all the data for the last 12 months and you know um, um, do a graph representation of what we think their usage was what was the comparative cost analysis um, versus the usage and then put it next to you know the observations from the trial and actually show them how much money they have saved and how much effort they have saved which would have you know uh, which, which is also e equivalent to dollars, the indirect um, cost that we're talking about. So absolutely, I provide them full support with putting together a business case to go to their management. And in some in some of these meetings, Michael, that we have had with with the customers, um, our customers have involved EPA as well. Okay. Because they were because they were dosing um, one particular chemical, and if they were to go and switch to another chemical, they wanted to make sure that you know they were doing everything right by the EPA, and they were still going to meet the discharge limits, and EPA had no issues with that. So I've had right. EPA sit on these meetings, and um, they have said that they have absolutely no. no What's well, that? Sounds like it might, uh, yeah, it might might uh, relieve a bit of the the stress when it comes to regulation and uh, and dealing with the EPA because I know that can be quite a challenge sometimes. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah. so but it, we don't necessarily need to involve uh, the EPA in in situations, no. do we? So that that's no, un, that's no. only if the uh, the organisation organisation is being being regulated and monitored by the EPA at the time. Is that right? Correct. And um, it's also up to the customer. So if the customer wants to be proactive and wants to have an open and clear dialogue with the EPA, um, all I'm saying is, you know, we are here fully supporting the customer with whatever they want. If they want us to get in front of the EPA and explain to them what, what the product can do and the changes it will bring on board, which can help the customer and both the environment, we are more than happy to do that. 
in a nutshell, um, we don't we don't shy away from getting in front of our customers EMT, in front of EPA, and in front of other um, key decision makers to actually show that we stand by our product and we stand by our commitment to provide them support through finding a solution. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, well, it's been fantastic having a chat with uh, with you, Sam. Um, it's uh, it's uh, really interesting to get a bit of an insight as to how you have found the the wine industry and how different it is to to other wastewater sectors uh, within um, well, the wider water treatment uh, industry, wastewater treatment industry. So uh, it's fantastic to hear that uh, that that Calix and and you directly, Sam, can provide that kind of support to directly to wineries and whether it's whether it's the uh, the wastewater operator who's uh, struggling with a pH problem, or whether it's the management of a, a much larger winery who's looking to reduce cost or improve yeah. the the salinity of the system. So it's fantastic that uh, that we've got all these resources, including Ralph as the technical uh, and and Ralph and Shane as uh, technical people, as well as uh, you in terms of uh, giving that that critical business support to to really justify those those outcomes. So yeah. Yeah, look, thank you very much, Sam. Um, I appreciate the chat and uh, we're just about to run into question time now. So um, if you have got any questions uh, for Sam or Ralph or myself, um, we'll try and answer them uh, after this. Uh, please drop the uh, any questions you've got in the chat and uh, and we'll, we'll try to get to them. Uh, so uh, for now, Sam, thank you very much for, for the chat and uh, hopefully we'll... See you again on the webinars uh, fairly soon. Um, sounds like there's a lot to talk about in the uh, in the industry. Yeah, there is. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the interview and conversation with uh, Ralph and Sam. Uh, I certainly uh, learned a lot from the uh, the discussion that was had there. We've had uh, a couple of questions come in uh, while. The webinar has, while that, uh, the interview, the conversation was going on, so I might jump straight into those. So Dave, um, uh, Dave has asked, uh, uh, will adding magnesium impact the soil quality if discharged to a woodlot? Uh, so this is a really interesting, uh, interesting question around the uh, the discharging of, of wastewater, whether it's to woodlots or whether it's for irrigation directly back onto the uh, onto the winery. It might be worth uh, just taking a quick, um, a, a brief detour around uh, the benefits of using ActiMag. Uh, so I might just uh, jump into, sorry, I've got to get this right. <laughs> I might just jump into a quick little presentation that, uh, that, that I've prepared uh, for, the, for the winery industry. So uh, essentially ActiMag's got a number of uh, different ways that we can uh, it can affect the, the the wastewater within the winery industry. So, uh, just wanted to touch briefly on the the, uh, the the winery wastewater. You know what it looks like, um, the odor control and, and waste, as well as how it affects how the uh, the ActiMag product affects pH and alkalinity around sodium and irrigation, uh, phosphate as well, um, but also biogas. Uh, the, your specific question, uh, Dave, probably relates to uh, around the pH and alkalinity, uh, but also around the, the phosphate, uh, sorry, the, the salinity control. So uh, those are generally the, the areas that we look at when we're, when we're looking at um, quality of wastewater for, for discharge with irrigation. So just, just quickly, uh, this, these are some photos of um, you know, typical wastewater systems at, uh, at wineries. So uh, the one on the left there is, is obviously a much larger uh, winery. So this is a large scale winery that been, we've been working with. Uh, they've got um, uh, grit traps and things like that. But essentially uh, the, the one, oh, sorry, my picture's kind of over the top of, uh, over the top of this other one. But it's essentially just a hole in the ground. So it eventually ends up uh, in some kind of pit, so it's collected in a pit, and then it's discharged to the uh, to the location that we're um, uh, that we're we're looking at discharging the, the wastewater to. So um, that can be just something as simple as this, which is an evaporation pond. Um, you know that that can be a bit of a challenge in itself because uh, after the wastewater has been in the pit and it's discharged to an open environment. 
the anaerobic bacteria has grown and it, it starts creating um, hydrogen sulfide, which can uh, be a bit of a problem for, for odour, uh, for surrounding areas, or if you've got the cellar door fairly close, that can be a problem. Um, uh, but it can also be potentially uh, put back on, on irrigation, and I'll come back to that in a second, um, especially for woodlots. Uh, now, thinking about, um, you know, that hydrogen sulphide that's generated in the pit, um, you know, wh whether the pits, generally the, the, the winery processing factory um, is located fairly close to the cellar door. It's quite often in the same building. So the collection of wastewater uh, is, is often fairly close to uh, where, where you've got visitors coming in, whether it's, um, um, you know, whether it's function centres for weddings and things like that, or it, uh, it can be uh, just, the, just the cellar door where you've got visitors coming in, obviously not at the moment because of the, the, uh, the troubles that are going on with the pandemic, but um, yeah, often you'll, you'll have people coming into the cellar door. And we, we know that one of the best parts about that, that cellar door experience is, the, uh, is the, the smell, the aroma of the, of the wine. So uh, any amount of hydrogen sulfide that creeps back from that wastewater system back into uh, where, where you're selling the wine, um, whether that's just through the, uh, the air or uh, it could be um, up through uh, pipes that are connected from, to, from the, uh, the, the wastewater system back to the, the factory where where the wastewater flows down. So the hydrogen sulfide can creep back into, uh, into the system. But the Actimag, if you drop it into the wastewater system, um, it essentially kills all the bacteria that, uh, that produce that hydrogen sulfide to generate the odour. Um, now talking about irrigation, uh, the, uh, one of the big benefits of using Actimag is that it's got a very high alkalinity, but a reasonably low uh, pH, so you can use it to control, uh, like have, have very good control around pH and alkalinity of the wastewater system, but it doesn't add any uh, any sodium into the system. So unlike something like a, a sodium hydroxide, um, which is used for, for controlling pH uh, and, and lifting that pH back up, you're not adding that sodium into the system, which means that the, uh, the, the, the wastewater is, is going to be uh, significantly better if you're using it for irrigation, whether it's whether it's for a woodlot or whether it's for a, a winery. Um, it, it it certainly does improve the the wastewater there, so that uh, it's actually pro it's better quality for the for the vines or for the uh, uh, for the woodlot. Um, it does it's essentially it boosts that the the alkalinity and pH. Uh, it, it as Ralph mentioned, it drops your SIR value or your sodium value that's in the soil. Uh, so that you're not contaminating the woodlot or, the, or your winery, you know, that high quality soil uh, with, with sodium from a sodium hydroxide or other, other types of uh, like chemical alkali, uh, whereas this is more of a, like a mineral based um, you know, alkali. Uh, it, it's also very environmentally friendly and green, so it's really safe to handle. Ralph mentioned that during the presentation, um, but it's not, it's not gonna burn any um, any plants uh, if, if it's applied as a uh, um, uh, ir irrigation, whether it's in a woodlot or, or uh, actually on the vines. Uh, it's not corrosive, uh, it's safe for the environment. So there's, there's, all the, there's, there's essentially no downside to, uh, to using it within the wastewater system and then discharging that, reusing or recycling that wastewater uh, back onto the winery or, or into a woodlot. Um, and it can be used for um, uh, capturing phosphate um, within the sludge as well. So if you've got uh, a high phosphate within the, within the wastewater that's coming out of the winery, um, I'll just flick over to the chemistry there. Um, so it, it captures phosphate as, a, as a, a phosphorus, ammonium and magnesium complex. And it drops it out into the, uh, into the sludge. So as well as uh, capturing the phosphate in, in terms in, in the wastewater, uh, which gives you better compliance with the EPA regulations around uh, phosphate discharge to land. Um, it also means that the sludge becomes more useful as well because you can compost the sludge and then that, that phosphorus, which is a fertiliser, can be, like the sludge can be composted and it can be applied uh, back to, you know, whether it's the vines or it could be uh, sold into uh, another industry as a fertiliser. So there's, there's always that option. Um, those type of things, they bring you extra value. Uh, so when you're looking at 
um, when you're looking at your wastewater system and looking at reducing costs. Uh, there's also the other side where you can actually earn money from um, from selling selling your waste, essentially selling the uh, the sludge as a as a high value compost when you've added things like the phosphate to it, using ActiMag to to capture that phosphate within the uh, within the sludge side of things. Uh, I did do a, a webinar around phosphate capture a couple of weeks ago, so if uh, if you are, if that is an area that uh, does affect your winery and you're interested in that, it might be worth popping back and uh, and taking a look at that uh, at that webinar. But um, it's a it's a bit of an interesting uh, method for capturing phosphate. And the other the other thing I wanted to briefly touch on was uh, biogas. So. Uh, it's one thing that not many wineries around Australia is doing, but it's very common over in Europe. So um, where you've got a, a waste stream that's got high in organics, whether it's sugar or it could be uh, um, waste from like cows and other things like that, uh, it can be slurried up in a big reactor tank and the gas is collected off the top and that gas can be used to generate electricity. So uh, that might be another way that, that Calex and our, our partners in terms of um, uh, like biogas consultants, uh, can can assist you in terms of getting more value from your waste stream. So you can essentially earn money, whether it's offsetting the electricity that's used uh, within your your winery or at the cellar door um, with electricity that's produced from biogas uh, generated from a waste stream. Essentially, the the, uh, the the waste that comes off the the solid waste that comes out of the uh, out of the winery, um, and that's uh, that's quite effective uh, over in. Over in Europe, these these biogas facilities are everywhere. We're fairly uh, the penetration within the market's fairly low here, but it certainly does give a, uh, a competitive advantage to to uh, to wineries or, or places that are reusing their uh, their waste stream uh, in such a way to get more value out of it. Uh, we are you know local manufacturer and we've got cutting edge technology. This is the uh, this up here is the, the calciner that everything's produced through. That's located here in Victoria, and it's where we distribute our, uh, our product from. Um, there is another question that's come in from Audrey. Um, she's asked how, how difficult is it, or, or easy, uh, is it to apply, um, to put in place, uh, to, to use at a winery, um, or how, and how costly could it be at a medium-sized winery? So uh, this is an example here of, um, uh, the dosing unit, uh, we've we've got heaps of these floating around. These can be hired uh, for in, in you know on a weekly basis or a monthly basis in in the order of uh, this one specifically. I think it's about two hundred and fifty dollars a week, uh, depending on your requirements in terms of cladding or enclosures and lockability. That can extend up to you know three hundred and fifty dollars, um, depending on what additional things that have got on it. Uh, these are available on a, on a rent to buy basis, a rent basis, uh, or you can purchase them outright. Uh, so we're quite flexible in terms of how we how we, we get the systems in and uh, and get them running within your wineries. Um, the uh, the other thing is we we do, as you heard from the discussion before with Ralph, is that we've got heaps of these temporary units that we can drop in place at your winery, uh, usually at a, at a discounted rate during the trial, uh, so that you get a, a good feel as to uh, how the product is going to work for your winery and, and for your wastewater stream. Uh, and it, there's no commitments. There's no long-term commitments. So you're not signing up to a long-term lease agreement or, or purchasing of equipment. Uh, we can drop a temporary unit in. You can actually see uh, in real time how it's going to affect your wastewater system and see the benefits that you're going to get out the back. So whether it's through uh, you know pH improvement, alkalinity improvement within the wastewater so that you become uh, more compliant with the uh, the limits that the EPA apply or or um, you know you might be might uh, be able to reuse more of the water uh, as, as irrigation water for the for the for the vines offsetting you know other other water costs and we know, with the fluctuating uh, rainfalls that are going on at the moment, you know, water is, is a, a really critical asset. So um, being able to reuse that and make sure you've got a, a really high quality water that you can reuse all the time is, uh, is, is quite important. Um, but as you can see, the, the dosing units, they're, they're, they're quite simple. Um, it's very easy to use. Calix has got delivery facilities. So we've got a truck and or a trailer that can, uh, that can turn up to your site and refill the systems. We've got uh, engineers and operators who are able to uh, troubleshoot, so they, they do the maintenance checks, 
Uh, they can troubleshoot the uh, units remotely um, or on site with our with our technicians. All of our delivery drivers they they they're qualified in terms of uh, testing and and, uh, and and cleaning these systems. So they'll do some um, simple maintenance tasks when they're there and just make sure everything's running as as expected, uh, so that they can identify any troubles before they occur. So um, Calix is able to provide that um, uh, for for your systems. Um, now, I'm wondering if there's any other questions that have uh, come in. I'll just flick back and, and see if there's... Uh, so, no nah, other questions. Um, I'm, not sure whether I, I'm not sure whether I completely answered, uh, answered Dave quest, Dave's questions around the woodlot, but uh, uh, to be very uh, clear, the, uh, the ActiMag can really only improve the wastewater quality for whatever you're doing. Uh, so, whether it's... Uh, whether it's woodlots or whether it's the winery, uh, whether it's actual back on the vines, uh, that, that's the case. Um, now in terms of how much of the ActiMag you would actually use uh, to control the pH and that type of thing, uh, that's a little bit more difficult to, to judge. Uh, for a small winery, for odour control, uh, one, of the, so one of the wineries that we, uh, we did with the hand dosing, that was only using about a thousand litres of the product per, uh, per season. So it's a fairly low usage. Uh, the other wineries that we've worked with uh, are quite large facilities, so they're producing you know, thousands and thousands of bottles of wine, or hundreds of thousands of bottles of wine. Um, and that, that would use a, a quite a bit more, so in the order of um, a, a, like 10, uh, 10 IBCs or 10,000 litres uh, per, per month type of thing, but that, that's on the very high end uh, of the, uh, the wastewater management if you've got a lot of, a lot of wastewater. So. Um, but th really, the only way to uh, to to tell how much you could, how much money you could save in terms of your chemical supply, or uh, in terms of improvement of uh, of the uh, the wastewater and and cost reduction uh, in different ways, is, is the best way is to get in touch. So uh, jump on our website, uh, calix.global or calix.com.au, um, and uh, we've got a contact contact us section there or there's a, a chat pot down in the bottom corner. Uh, it, it's worth having a chat with us to, so that you can get a bit of a feel for, for your specific system. And as you heard from Ralph, uh, the initial consultation and everything is completely free. There's no obligations or anything like that. Uh, we, we're just really passionate about the work we do around uh, wastewater improvement uh, and sustainability improvement. So um, that's, that's really what drives us. And uh, if, we can, if we can help you out with your wastewater challenge, then uh, all the better. So, um, okay. Uh, if there's no other questions, I'll just double check again. No, there's no further questions. Um, I'll end the uh, the stream here. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the the interview with with both Ralph and and Sam. And thank you both of you very very much. Uh, there's certainly some insights there that uh, that I've learned, and uh, hopefully this has helped you out. Um, we'll uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Thank you. Calix was founded in 2005 by myself and a Queenslander named Colin Hawley. He had a great idea for a new type of kiln or furnace. As Connor and I developed the idea, it became apparent that the technology had the potential to be applied to many industries and could help address some of the world's most pressing problems. We raised some money, did some small scale testing and gave some great results, encouraged us to build a commercial scale facility at Bacchus Marsh in Victoria. The calyx flash calciner, or CFC process, involves grinding minerals or other feedstocks to between 100 and 1,000th of a millimetre in size, then flash heating them in an externally heated reactor in a very short time, up to about 950 degrees centigrade. As trapped gases in the material bubble out through the particles, they create a highly porous structure. These particles are then cooled very quickly leaving a very porous, honeycomb-like structure. New materials produced by the CFC are proven to have similar reactive properties to nanoparticles without the safety concerns and high costs, but with all the benefits that nanotechnology is developing into numerous products, applications and markets. 
I joined Calix in 2013 because I could sense the huge potential of this technology. Uh, it's a platform technology that has two sides, production of nanoactive materials on the one hand and the potential to be applied in CO2 capture on the other. Our first commercial product was released in 2013 for wastewater treatment, followed closely by two more products in 2014, one for infrastructure protection and a specialty chemical additive. All these products are now in export. In addition to our commercial products, we also have some pre-commercial products already in paid trials in Asia and Europe that look really exciting. One's a water conditioner to help with uh, yields and environmental problems in aquaculture. And the others are non-toxic, environmentally friendly, broad spectrum crop protection product. We also have a rich research and development pipeline with some really exciting developments in advanced batteries as well as CO2 capture for the lime and cement industries. Additionally, if the materials have trapped CO2, the technology can separate that CO2 directly for no additional energy penalty. For example, limestone by weight is approximately 50% CO2, which is released as a gas when making lime, and is therefore why the cement and lime industries are very CO2 intensive. Application of the technology in CO2 mitigation is thus of interest to those industries. And we're piloting these programs uh, with over 25 million in funding from Australian and European governments. And we are working with some of the world's largest companies in these areas. Having proven its commercial products and business models, Calix is about to embark on some serious market entries into the US, Europe and Asia to grow its revenues and margins. We will also continue to develop our pre-commercial products into fully-fledged commercial products and processes through both direct and distribution of sales and licensing strategies. And lastly, we'll continue to develop the multitude of high potential R&D applications into some of the world's fastest growing industries. Calix really is all about creating new materials and processes to solve global challenges.